Okay, how's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be episode 3 of Tools and Stuff. Today's episode is going to be geared more towards the newer individuals into this hobby who may not have a dedicated spot to work on their uh, cars and what have you, and they may not have a dedicated set of tools to work on their cars and things like that. And that can lead to some issues. We'll get into that a little bit later. But for right now, we're going to go through kind of the minimum of what you'd want for tools and how I set things up. And these are tools that I actually use and I keep on my bench. And uh, I have holders and organizers and everything for them. But this is for those who are just starting out and uh, generally need a set of tools. Uh, for those that have a little bit more experience, you may want to stick around. There may be a couple things that you find of value throughout this video process and some of the other items that I'm using. So uh, stick around, check some of those out. And uh, as always, of course, if there's anything I miss or anything that somebody thinks is a good idea, please hit me up in the comments, let me know, and uh, we can share all this information to everybody. And uh, another thing is I'm actually going to dive into some uh, more of the specifics of the tools that I'm using. And hopefully that will help um, some newer individuals gather a set of what's actually needed and uh, not have a bunch of extra tools that they don't need. Okay, and before we get too terribly started, I want to give a shout out to my stepson for the wonderful Christmas gift. Um, I'll tell you what, this thing has seen more chocolate milk than uh, it has a right to, but I'm a big boy and I'm going to drink as much chocolate milk as I can. And that's just the way it is. Okay, first off, I've got all my tools and everything I need in here, but before we even get into that, get yourself an old towel and you can lay that on your desktop or your dining room table or whatever to work on. Keep it with your tools. Uh, this makes it a really handy uh, work mat of sorts and also it does help prevent some of the screws that you may drop and things like that from rolling away on you and uh, it helps protect the surface that you're working on so we want to make sure we've got that accompanied keep yourself a mat i recommend a light color uh, makes things easier to see and we'll go on from there okay uh first thing for my toolbox here i'm using just an old chinese food container the lid itself i'm going to get those out of the way the lid itself actually makes a fantastic parts tray and you can see they fit the 132nd scale cars just fine and this makes it really good when you're removing body screws and whatnot you can put your screws drop them into here and uh, they uh, won't roll away on you and get lost anybody who's watched this channel knows i still use an old chinese food container this one's pretty well beat up the only difference is i have a block of wood uh, with some checkerboard glued on to the tray itself just like that and uh, that helps you keep the car out of the tray uh, i don't want the car itself picking up screws and stuff with the magnets and any dirt or anything that gets in here in here getting on the tires but other than that works great i uh, highly recommend using the chinese food trays the lids of the chinese food containers as your parts tray okay another thing i have in my little wonder box here is just keep a rag, just a regular old rag. Keep that around. You never know when you need a rag. Okay, now we're going to get into some of the basics of the tools, and uh, we'll show you exactly what we have in here and uh, how we kind of use them and what they're all about. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about here today is the uh, drivers that I use for almost everything. And these are part of the daily routine if you're working on your cars. The first one I have is a Phillips head, which is used for the body screws or removing the chip or the uh, guide flag assembly or the magnet or pretty much anything like that. Uh, they use a pretty standardized uh, Phillips head screw size. And in my case, I'm using a Phillips number zero for this particular size driver. Your mileage may vary. I've found some... Uh, variation in different manufacturers different brands different levels of quality in your phillips screwdriver so find one that fits good uh, it may be a uh, double zero it may be a zero you'll just have to make sure with your if you pick up a set and uh, make sure that uh, you've got a size that's adequate for the needs um, and i also have a couple button magnets stuck on here 
just for the simple fact it makes it handy if I'm removing a screw it'll hold on to the screw and then I just pull it into my parts tray and if you need a little more magnetic force slide the magnets down near to the tip and if it's too much slide it back away from the tip and uh, I found this to be very helpful all the way uh, across the board for a lot of different things that's why I still keep uh, my magnets on the screwdriver eventually I'm going to have it mounted off to the side and uh, be able to just pick it up with a screwdriver or wipe the magnet of uh, the screwdriver across the magnet to make sure it's magnetized to some degree but for right now this works just fine I also have a regular flathead and in this case it's a 3 30 seconds flathead that seems to be a good balance in size uh, these are useful for uh, popping out motors or stubborn axle um, or for uh, I go up underneath and I usually uh, pop up the guide flag if I want to remove the guide flag with one of these as well. And uh, it's general all around. There's no slotted screws, but they're handy for doing a little bit of pry work and getting into certain areas to do certain things. And uh, really invaluable. I use this one a fair amount as well. And uh, I'm using a 3 seconds inch uh, width of the blade. And that seems to be about the right size. A sixteenth of an inch is a little small and uh, can maybe tend to damage some stuff if you need to get in there and price something. And the uh, thickness itself of the blade of an eighth of an inch blade is a little thick. So the three thirty seconds seems to be just about the right size for what I'm doing. I also have one Torx head and this is a T8. And this is useful if you are going into a controller or one of the digital track sections underneath the stickers that talk about you know remove the sticker for warranty work um, these are almost always a t8 and uh, it's so far that's all i've ever needed and it does good uh, to remove those torx head screws that you find on occasion between foot uh, track sections and the uh, controllers themselves have a t8 screw in there as well and that's what these are used for. And these are another tool that do remain on my bench at all times. Okay, another item we're going to talk about real quick here is pliers. Um, the green and black handled set I picked up over at Michael's. I believe the, this is the Metalworks kit um, that I found over at Michael's in the model section where they sell the carded uh, et, um, photo etch. Uh, metal kits of airplanes, cars, whatnot, and uh, it's really good, really handy, and this is a good little set. I've used it quite a bit, and uh, one thing I like about these, both these uh, particular pair of pliers, is the jaws are not serrated. That's why I chose these, and you really don't want your, uh, serrated jaws for what we're doing. A lot of times we're dealing with either plastic, brass, or otherwise soft material, and there's really no need to have serrated jaws that are just going to chew everything up. Uh, of course, I have a pair of needle nose for getting in and doing anything I may need to get into. I have a pair of, uh, these are more of a duckbill. And uh, these I actually uh, use, uh, what I tend to do is I take the brass barrels of the brushes. And when a brush is worn out, I save them. And I can open those up and pull out the old braid. And I can buy a roll of braid cut it to length, put a new piece of braid in there, and these are really good for crimping them back uh, into place. And they, uh, again, the jaws are not serrated, and that doesn't mar up the brass in any way, shape, or form. So I picked these up, again, at Michael's, uh, the metal craft set, and they've done a pretty good job. Uh, I'm not using conventional diagonal cutters. I'm using more of a sprue cutter. And uh, again, the only things that we're going to nip on here are going to be either, uh, you know, very small gauge wiring or um, some uh, plastic parts off of a sprue like you'd find if you open up your case. You'll find uh, like another set of mirrors in your car case and uh, those are on a sprue. This is just real handy. You just nip those right off the sprue without any issue. And uh, again, it's a decent quality tool. These are not super quality here. Um, they're just general purpose, general level quality, nothing major. And uh, this one, I don't think you need. Uh, I have them anyway because I've had them for years, and it's kind of like, a, I mean, this is me. They see this, they know it's me, I guess. 
This little tiny pair of needle nose pliers, again, smooth jaws, not serrated, and uh, I don't use them that terribly much. I keep them in my box because I've had them for years in my HO days, and uh, I'm just stuck with these, and uh, to me it's just a habit, I have to have them. Okay, we're gonna talk about something else that you may find that you need, and uh, especially if you have your track set up on a floor, a carpeted floor specifically, now you're going to want some tweezers and again none of these are really high quality they're just uh, you can pick them up at any uh, pharmacy any you know drugstore Walmart even the grocery store you can find a selection of tweezers and uh, I just got a couple different types that I like to use and I've had for years and they're good for doing decals or for repairing of small pieces and parts that uh, may have broken and uh, just general all around another thing I have that you may not need but I do recommend if you come across a pair to grab some is a set of uh, locking forceps and these are really good for uh, grabbing a hold of a small part you can just lock the handle and it'll hold it and then you can hold it while you're painting or doing what you need to do so locking forceps I think are a fantastic uh, item to have around I have uh, several several pairs of these things and I have them in all my different types of modeling boxes because I actually find this to be an extremely versatile tool. And if you have the means to uh, grab a set, by all means grab a set. However, it's not really required for uh, everyday maintenance, but it's something that will be handy uh, when the time comes, if necessary. Okay, another thing that I uh, tend to keep on hand, and again, this is a hold back over from my HO days, and I find a lot of value and a lot of use in this particular item itself. This is just an old click eraser that uh, is designed for ink, and this is really good for cleaning up. Uh, you can even go over your pickups with it and uh, clean a little bit with your pickup uh, for your pickups uh, where the brass strips are underneath the brush barrels. You can go ahead and uh, use that to clean those. And uh, this is just a really general, all around, really good way to clean up certain things. And uh, once again, it's something that I had and I keep it around with me if, uh, and this thing's probably, you know, 10 years old at least. So if you're running over Office Depot or something, you find some of these click erasers that are designed for ink, you know, pick up one or two, keep it in your box. You'll be surprised how often you do you end up using it. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about something that you probably don't need right now if your cars are stock. Um, I've picked these up to use for other items and uh, I will take this moment to go ahead and uh, do a, um, believe me, a, a very shameless plug for the brand. Um, these are my hex drivers and I got the hex drivers because on occasion I change out the wheel sets on the Carrera cars to uh, the slotted or uh, CB, CB Designs aluminum wheels and they have a uh, small grub screw and they require a uh, 9 millimeter, a 0.9 millimeter, excuse me, 0 0.9 millimeter driver and I also have a 50 thousandths hex driver and that would be used on NSR type wheels or uh, in this case I use it for the pulley on my tire razor and uh, Anytime I'm dealing with a small hex head type of grub screw, the tool you use is extremely important. And yes, you can buy um, slot car design tools with the right sizes for anywhere in the neighborhood of, you know, eight to $10, somewhere in that range. And they have replaceable tips, but I can go back to my radio control car days and I've realized the benefit of the MIP branded drivers. And especially for my small grub screws, uh, the tool is phenomenal and it's probably the best out there in the business. And uh, I've used them for years and I never recall once where I have stripped out a grub screw using the MIP tools. They're uh, very high quality, they don't round off. Uh, they always maintain themselves, they're very sharp uh, everything is ground and shaped just so. They're in just a fantastic tool all the way around. And for your small grub screws, I recommend investing in the MIP branded drivers. Um, they're about half again as much 
is what you would find for your average slot car tool, but these are by far better than uh, anything else I've ever used. And uh, I've even gone back in the hobby shop years ago and plunked down a hundred dollar bill to buy a full set of these things because they were that good. And when I got out of, out of the uh, radio control car hobby, uh, I gave the set to a friend of mine and he's still using them to this day. And that was probably 20 years ago or more. And uh, it goes to uh, say how good the drivers actually are and how well they work. So when it came time for me to buy a set of the smaller grub screws, uh, tools for the small grub screws, uh, I didn't think twice to go with the MIP tools. And uh, I recommend that if you have to buy some, you do the same. Okay, let's talk about another important item that we have to have, and that's lubrication. And what I'm using here is I generally use two weights of oil. Most people, you only need one technically. I use two because it's a habit of mine, again, uh, and it's a habit that's hard to break. Uh, I feel more comfortable using two different weights, and that's fine. Your choice is yours. But when we get down to it, oil is oil. It's always a question of weight and whether or not it's safe for plastic. That's our primary consideration. And in this case, uh, I've got one bottle here with a slightly thicker oil that I use for my axle bushings. And I have a thinner weight oil that I use on the uh, pinion side bushing on the motor itself. I find a thinner oil, uh, more comfortable with it using for that. And of course I have some grease that I use to, to grease my gears up. And uh, again, we've stated the consideration for oils that what are we after? We're after something that's safe for plastics, uh, something that, uh, you know, does what we want, but other than that, oil is oil. The right viscosity, the right uh, safe for plastic criteria, other than that, we should be good to go. And for that, uh, for a matter of saving money, actually, uh, for my oil, for my main oil, I'm using Mobile One Full Synthetic, and it's 5 weight 20. And that's what I'm using here for my axle bushings. And for the thinner oil, for the uh, motor bearings, I'm using, again, Mobile One Full Synthetic, and I'm using a 0 weight 20. And this combination here seems to do really good. And buying the oil in a quart size may seem a little bit expensive at first, but I've used this bottle here for months. And I'll tell you, it's uh, you don't use a lot of oil, especially if you have the right size uh, needle on your bottles. And because you can get just a small drop where you want it without making a mess and wasting a bunch of oil. And this quantity of oil will last, you know, years and years and years. So it's actually a good, inexpensive way to buy your oil in the long run, especially if you're going to make a hobby out of this. Okay, likewise, let's talk about grease for a minute. Same thing, there's certain criteria I look for in grease. Uh, number one, it has to be safe for plastic. Number two, I want a relative comfortable amount of stickiness. I don't want it too sticky, but I also don't want it so loose that it's just going to sling all over the place. And the grease I'm using here, it's A, it's safe for plastic. B, um, it has to me what seems to be the right amount of stickiness to it. It adheres well, it goops well, but it doesn't sling. It does a little bit, but not a whole lot. So it's got a lot of reduced sling to it. Uh, it's very safe. It's actually uh, food grade, believe it or not. And what I'm using for my grease is I'm using this right here. Just regular old super lube. It's a full synthetic with PTFE, safe for plastic, uh, safe for foods. If you have something like a mixer and you want to grease up the gear train, that's what this grease is actually designed for. It does well under pressure. It doesn't sling a whole lot. And the best part, it's easy to clean out the old grease. Uh, that's part of my car maintenance is I will uh, spray the stuff down with um, some of the CRC plastic safe electronic cleaner and that will just simply remove the grease and get it out of my way and uh, It lets me uh, change out my grease on my gears Because uh, sometimes you'll get some plastic residue or some lint or anything that gets embedded in there 
and you're best off just changing your grease instead of just adding more. So I'll uh, give that stuff a quick spray. It uh, pulls all that grease out of there and then I can just go ahead and re-grease and uh, I'm back in business with fresh grease, good to go. Okay, uh, let's talk about some other things here involving the lubrication and what I'm doing. Uh, I picked these bottles up on Amazon and these are just one ounce bottles and they have a lure lock cap. And uh, that tells me I can use different needles as long as I get some lure lock needles. So I also bought an assortment of the blunt lure lock type needles. And there's all sorts of different gauges in this box and all sorts of different sizes. So for my uh, uh, five weight oil, I'm using a 23 gauge needle. And for the uh, zero weight oil, I'm using a 25 gauge needle. And on my uh, 10 millimeter syringe, that's also lure locked, I'm using a 14 gauge needle. And uh, these allow me not to, uh, you know, make too much of a mess, keeps everything under control. And uh, in the event of damage or anything else, I can just simply change out the needles anytime I need to, and we're good to go. Um, these caps, I just simply made these out of a WD-40 tube with the caps that came with the lure lock set. And I just uh, slide that over the needle and it helps protect the needle. Now, I do recommend one thing, you do not keep your lubrications in the same box with your tools. There's a chance these will spill and make a mess. Uh, you can keep them in a little cardboard box or something and bring them out when you're ready to work on your cars, but I, I do recommend you don't keep them in your toolbox itself. Okay, let's talk for a minute about adhesives. Um, there are certain types of glues or adhesives that we may want to utilize to fix broken items or things like that. And I have a wide variety but some of them are uh, probably more useful than others, uh, especially if you're getting started. So one thing I would recommend, and probably one of the first ones, would be this uh, E6000 uh, adhesive. It takes a while for things to dry, but it's good for refixing uh, body parts that may have broken off, things like that. And uh, the good part about it is that it is a relatively flexible adhesive. And this is probably about, it's pretty similar to uh, something called Shugu, but I chose this, and I believe I picked this up at Michael's as well, for one reason and one reason only. I've got the jewelry and bead that comes on a card because that also comes with a handful of the lure lock needles. Are we seeing a theme here? And it makes it really easy to just take the cap off, put the needle on, and then you can get in there and just very carefully uh, apply a small amount of glue where you need it. So the lure lock needles that come with the jewelry and bead for the E6000 are very beneficial. Okay, another one uh, that I find useful is just regular liquid plastic styrene cement. And you can get that at any hobby shop or any, uh, any uh, pretty much anywhere that sells models. And uh, this stuff works really good uh, for, again, fixing certain body pieces and things like that that may have broken off. And uh, so I find that I use this quite a bit for certain uh, tasks, and I always keep a jar of this around. Uh, you never know when you're gonna need it. As far as, uh, I also have some clear nail polish. That's probably not something you're gonna need right away. The clear nail polish I use to glue the tires to the rims and that is uh, prior to truing them on the tire razor. Um, I find benefit in gluing tires to the rims, uh, but if you're running full stock, you may not need to. So, but that's something to keep in mind down the road when you start truing your tires, is uh, I prefer to use clear nail polish for attaching the uh, tires to the wheels. Let's talk about super glues. Okay, I've got a bottle of, uh, in this case, it's gel. And uh, I'm not crazy about the gel, but that's all I could find at the time. They didn't have any of the thick. I prefer the thick. It's a little thinner than the gel type, uh, but the gel works fine um, without issue. But um, these little bottles here are actually pretty good. They do a halfway decent job of keeping themselves uh, unclogged for the most part. 
better than some of them that I've seen. And uh, so that's why I usually buy the Loctite brand and uh, keep a jar, uh, you know, uh, applicator like this handy because uh, there are times where you need to use them and uh, this makes a good uh, thing to keep in your box just in case you need some super glue. Another type of super glue I like to use is thin and again we'll take a look here and this will probably be a good hint for everybody. I've got some very thin super glue and again I've got a uh, very small needle. In this case, it's 27 gauge. It's the smallest needle that I have. And uh, there's a reason why I take it out of the bottle and pour it into one of these containers. Uh, I do recommend that you grease the threads before you put the cap on. That'll allow this to be removable uh, much easier. But also, um, we know how super glue behaves, especially the thin. You just look at it and the needles are going to clog up. And this 27 gauge needle is very thin and that's what we want to get a very very micro drop of the thin type super glue well you can see it's all kind of black in here if this nut if this clogs up all you have to do is take a lighter and just heat the needle up and you will see it glow red and uh, that should usually unclog it if not you want to heat the plastic a little bit not enough to melt it but just enough to get it warm and this will unclog the needle. So I've used a fair amount of this already uh, for several different things and I still haven't changed the needle. Um, I just keep cleaning it out and it, uh, it keeps working for me. So for the thin type CA, uh, that's what I recommend. I just decanted an entire bottle into here and uh, that's the way I've been using it. And I uh, built some small uh, model aircraft with balsa wood using this method and it works really well. So I'm a big fan of the uh, lure lock needle with uh, thin type CA in a bottle. Makes it very, very easy to clean your tip and it also prevents a lot of uh, damage that can, can, that can happen if you accidentally knock the bottle over because uh, it really does limit how much is actually gonna come out of the bottle. Okay, I'll put my, that there too. Sometimes you need a kicker uh, to go with your CA type of your super glue type of adhesives or an accelerant. And uh, in my case, currently, right now as we speak, I haven't been able to get any locally. Uh, the hobby shop that I tend to deal with is uh, quite a ways away. And, uh, you know, I don't always order that stuff online. Fortunately, there's always a readily available solution that probably everybody has in their house. And that's baking soda. I always keep a little container of baking soda and it works really well if uh, you have to if you're using your super glue in a uh, environment where you would want to use a kicker. Uh, in that case, like if I'm filling the divots on the wheels, I can use the gel or the thick, which I prefer, uh, put some glue in there and you know fill up your divots, sprinkle them with baking soda, let them set for a few minutes and they're gonna set hard as a rock. So baking soda is a good thing to have around makes a great little uh, accelerant for your CA type adhesives. One thing that I will mention is I do not recommend keeping your uh, adhesives and your lubrications in the same box. I can't tell you, I've seen it, heard of it uh, quite a few different times, especially it happened once to a friend of mine, which made me laugh because he uh, you know, was always kind of a snob about things. And uh, he called me up on the phone telling me that after he uh, got done flying his plane for the uh, day, he was doing some post-flight maintenance. And generally, old school, some of the post-flight maintenance was to take the glow plug out of the engine, apply, apply a few drops of after-run oil, and uh, run it through the engine, a couple drops in the car, be good to go. Well, he went the whole procedure, except he accidentally grabbed a bottle of CA instead of his after run oil. So he just basically, you know, did a lot of damage to an expensive engine by uh, not paying attention to what he was doing. So I recommend that not only you keep your adhesives and your lubricants in separate areas, separate boxes, whatever. Uh, make sure you keep them separated out on your bench when you're working too. You don't want to accidentally grab adhesive when you need lubrication. And, uh, you know, that's something to be mindful of. So 
make sure we've uh, got those separated and you know what you're doing at all times. Okay, one other little item I forgot to mention is uh, make sure you have a few toothpicks. Keep a few toothpicks in your little box too. And uh, those can be extremely handy, especially again, if you're running your track on the floor and it's a carpeted floor, you're gonna be using those quite a bit to pull lint and uh, fibers from around the axle and things like that. So a combination between the toothpicks and the tweezers help out considerably for uh, making sure you don't have any fibers wrapped around your axle. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave this relatively short. That should wrap this one up pretty quick. Um, but the basic, you know, uh, keep yourself a rag and your tools. I'm using an old Chinese food container. The lid itself works great as a parts tray. And, uh, you know, keep your tools where you need them and dedicate yourself to have a set of tools for working on your cars and or your track. You'll find it's much more convenient. I've seen so many times where people haven't maintained a car correctly. And part of the reason, well, I don't have this or I don't have that or that's all the way, you know, upstairs in the garage. I need to go get it. I'll do it later and it doesn't get done. So having a dedicated set of tools is really helpful um, for making sure that your cars are maintained properly. And I'll tell you right now, this car here, um, this car probably has 180,000 laps on it and it still performs great, still runs great. The only thing I've done so far is change the rear axle because the gear wore out and changed tires. But other than that, the car's in great shape and uh, maintenance goes a long way to prolonging the life of the vehicles. And, uh, you know, just for me, it's actually um, probably one of the more enjoyable aspects of the hobby is spending a few minutes to sit down with a car, run through it, and uh, make sure it's clean, make sure it's lubed, it's in good condition, make any little minor repairs I may need to make, and move on. And to me, that's a big part of the hobby and something I really prefer. So we'll go ahead and we'll wrap this up. And uh, again, please, if anybody out there uh, has any other suggestions or whatever, throw them in the comments list. It's, uh, you know, because I don't know everything. And uh, just take this list as maybe a, a minimum of what you would want to use. There's always a lot more. I did not get, in, get into the discussion of pullers and presses and things like the tire raiser. That's all stuff for later on. Uh, for uh, those of you that are new to this hobby, you just need some basic tools to uh, help you maintain your cars and you'll be good to go. So... Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up and uh, just want to make sure I want to thank everybody again for your continued support on this channel. It's meant a lot to me and uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, just let me know. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that uh, subscription button and slam that notification button too. That way you'll be notified when I post new content. And again, uh, we're going to try to get back into the aspect of uh, pro providing uh, weekly updates or regular content and uh, keep the channel moving and uh, keep progress going with what I'm doing. So we got a lot of work to do, so hopefully all that will come into play. Okay, well, I want everybody to have a good day. Stay safe. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, we'll see you soon.